Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Slovenia for the first time in well over a year. And we're going to kick off with another sort of Slovenian mini-series, if you like. So, for this review and for the mini-series generally, a massive, massive shout out to Davor Shiritz. Um, he's been watching the channel for probably more than four years now, if I'm remembering rightly. Um, but he found the channel when I did my very first Slovenian review, the third Pill IPA from Pelletson and that was one that I just randomly found in Edinburgh and it's thanks to him that all these other Slovenian reviews have come after that actually. He's been given things by breweries and told to send them on to me. He sent a lot of beer himself. He sent me some very nice Belgian beers from his cellar as well actually. So a massive, massive shout out to Davor. He has a ridiculous knowledge of Belgian beer. I keep trying to get him to start up his own channel and review some of these beers that he has in his cellar. The list that he has there, by the way, is ridiculous. Um, but I keep trying to encourage him to do that. So I, I will still keep my fingers crossed and hope that you see um, Davor doing his own channel in the future because this guy has a, a ridiculous knowledge of, uh, of Belgian beer, actually. But a massive thank you to him for uh, facilitating all these Slovenian beers and some of the random Belgian ones that you see as well, actually. It's really cool to have supporters like Davor who um who who facilitate all these different beer reviews for me? So yeah, really really cool actually. For this review, we are going to go to Nova Gorica, which is right on the border with Italy, and we're having a look at another beer from a brewery you've seen me review a good number of things from before. I must have reviewed maybe about eight, nine, maybe even ten beers from these guys actually. So this is another beer from Pivovarna Reservoir Dogs. This one is called the Kromberg Pills and it comes in at 5% ABV. So Davor sent me this one because I've been going through a little bit of a lager phase and he said to me that this is a proper Slovenian pills. This one has the Bobek hop from Slovenia which is kind of, it's one of the hops that's quite similar to you know the Czech Sats, the German Haller Tau Titnangers. It's very similar to those in terms of its profile actually. So this one is a proper Slovenian craft pilsner actually. So I'm very very curious to see what uh, what this one has in store for us. I've reviewed lots of different beers from these guys before. The Batch 50 Stout was uh, was awesome. Um, the 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 uh, wolf, the Styrian wolf one that they have as well, Lone Wolf, I believe it's called. That's a really lovely, lovely IPA from these guys, and again, very kind of typically Slovenian actually. So this is definitely a brewery that you want to check out. I don't think I've ever had a lager from these guys. Um, so this is going to be a really interesting one for us to review. But these guys have got a lot of nice IPAs. You know, be it Session IPAs, West Coast style IPAs and things like that, and their Imperial Stouts are also very good in my experience. But definitely cool to be able to review a kind of classic Slovenian craft pills if you like, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer. Really cool to have some more Slovenian reviews for you here on the channel, and I thought this would be a very nice one to kick off with. So um, yeah, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward, all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from people Varna Reservoir Dogs before and no doubt you will see some more added to that at some point in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for the Slovenian beers that I've reviewed for you and that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Pivovarna Reservoir Dogs then, on to my brewery notes. So Reservoir Dogs, as I've told you before, was founded by four friends who basically just brewed in their spare time. This is Urosh Komal, who was a mathematician, um, Alosa Polenchitz, who was a neurologist, um, Andre Sluga, who was an economist, and then Matthew Bredsigar, who was an electrical engineer. But they say that they basically just wanted to brew beer for themselves initially, and they learned much of their trade from learning different, you know, reading different blogs on the internet and, you know, learning from books 
Um, but their beers proved to be very, very popular and their brewing continued to expand and get bigger and bigger and the positive feedback that they had from lots of people just encouraged them to go commercial and eventually they did it. So interestingly as well though, despite how kind of big this this brewery is actually, and it's not, you know, it's one of the more popular craft breweries in Slovenia I guess you could say, and it's big in that kind of sense, but they are, you know, still a, a small kind of craft operation. But despite how kind of popular they've grown, these guys all still maintain their day jobs, and they say that this really allows them to be, you know, experimental, which is what they always wanted. Um, but the company was founded officially in 2014, and of course, it's named after the Quentin Tarantino movie of the same name. And initially these guys brewed as a contract brewery at Hotel uh, Gold Club Idovshina, which Idovshina of course is home to Pivovarna Pelitson that I mentioned earlier where I got my first Slovenian beer from. Um, but these guys are now based, as I said, in Nova Gorica, which is right on the border with Italy. And they've just they've opened up their new brewery now. It's got a tap room there, a much larger capacity than they had before. And over the last while they've been working on their barrel aging program as well. They've been expanding the fermentation capacity of the brewery and just releasing a lot Lots of uh, different beers from what I understand. So when I do make it to Slovenia I will go to the tap room and I will, uh, you know, I will f uh, do a little bit of out and about filming and I'm hopeful that I can get an interview with some of the founders as well. I know that the head brewer, May, I believe his name is, is quite keen to do a, an interview or something like that and so you will see him on the channel at some point as well. May actually gave Davor, um, he gave Davor the other Reservoir Dogs beers that you saw me review a while back actually so shout out to me as well and um, but as of September 2020 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced around 40 different beers and uh, there's a whole variety of different styles in there actually you'll get some really really good beers from Reservoir Dogs like I said the Lone Wolf was probably my favourite one that I had um, the Batch 50 and was it the Batch 100 as well am I remembering rightly you know they've got some really nice Imperial Stouts in there they did have a very good black IPA from what I remember as well but the name of that beer has gone completely outside of my head so if you see a Reservoir Dogs Black IPA that is definitely worth checking out Lone Wolf is a really very nice unique Slovenian uh, IPA and uh, as I say the Batch 50 and Batch 100s are, uh, are pretty nice as well actually those were special edition beers but they've tweaked the recipes and things like that for, uh, with those to make them even better from what I understand. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Pivovarna Reservoir Dogs for the moment. If you want to learn more about the brewery, you can of course check out the brewery website. They've got a very nice website actually. Uh, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. Again, massive shout out to Davor for making this review possible. Possible. and um, yeah this should be really interesting this is my first lager beer from these guys and as I said I've been going through a little bit of a lager phase on the channel over the last little while so yeah this one is the Kronberger Pilsner um, and it comes in at 5% ABV and it's hopped with Bobek which should be pretty cool so there you can see at the top of the label this is the Reservoir Dog symbol you can also see it on the back there, which is pretty cool. I do like the cans actually. I'm not sure if they've moved all of their um, all of their packaging to cans at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, this one I think should be very nice. This is a 440 milliliter can. Surprised at that actually. I th I would have thought that Slovenia would stick to the kind of half liters, um, as they do in Germany and Austria, because I think the brew the sort of brewing heritage. That Slovenia has, I think it's kind of, in some ways it is kind of related to the, their time as part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, and I know during the war actually, the Germans, the, the you know, the big breweries, the Lashkos and the Unions, I think the, the Germans took those over and um, were brewing beer and stuff like that as well. So I think a lot of the beer heritage that uh, Slovenia has, the classic beer heritage at least, is kind of similar to the Austrian and German ones just because of the proximity and things. So yeah, I'm surprised that they've gone for the 440s rather than the half litres, but anyway, a lot of craft breweries are doing that so I guess it's understandable, but um, yeah, this one I think should be pretty cool actually. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. 5% Pilsner this one with Slovenian Bobek hop. So yeah, there we go. This should be really quite nice actually. I'm very, very curious to see what this has in store for us. And it's definitely awesome to have some more Slovenian beers 
for you here on the channel. This is what it's all about. I mean, I love trying different beers from across Europe and further afield, of course. So, you know, it's awesome to have people like, you know, Davor and Riku and then Chris and stuff like this who give me crazy beers and very unusual beers to try here on the channel. It's awesome. So, yeah, massive, massive shout out to all of you guys who have supported the channel over the last, what is it now, seven and a half years? Something crazy like that. So, yeah. Um, as you can see, though, and as you would expect from a Pilsner, this one has poured a lovely bright golden yellow colour. If we shine the light through this, yeah, lovely bright straw golden yellow. Um, the I would say the head on this one is poured to be about one third of a finger frothy white head. That is just fading away to be a very thin foamy layer though. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few smaller ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But overall, it does look pretty damn nice I have to say. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. That is awesome. Um, and just, you know, it is pretty much what you would accept, expect from a Pilsner. There's nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. Um, the beer itself, is it clear? Yeah, there is a good degree of clarity to this one. It's got a little bit of haze, but uh, yeah, it's unfiltered from what I understand. But yeah, this looks very, very nice, I have to say. So let's have a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on. Oh yeah, this smells very nice. Does smell, you know, very authentic. Um, the Pilsner style, of course, originates from uh, from Pilsen in the Czech Republic, Bohemia. So it was known. It was dis it was created by a German brewer. The very first one was the uh, the Pilsner Urkel, or uh, is it Pilsensk? I think they call it Pilsensky Prastroy in uh, in Czech. So yeah, from Bohemia, it was a kind of half Germanic, half Czech region. You know, they all lived together at that time, but that changed later, of course. Um, so yeah, created by a German brewer in what is now the Czech Republic. Um, but this one, you, this one, it it smells very authentic in some ways, but the sort of hoppy profile, of course, comes across quite differently. Um, so yeah, for me, mm, this one, it's interesting. This because. It actually reminds me. Recently, of course, I had some of the the beers from uh, from Green Gold. Uh, in the Sa in Savin they call it Savin Savinskia or Savin the Savinia Valley, um, you know um, the guys up there sent me a bunch of beers and this one it's interesting because the yeast the yeasty notes that I get out of this actually smell very similar to that so I don't know if a lot of these Slovenian breweries are using the kind of same yeasty sort of things because um, yeah you do get an interesting yeasty quality out of this one um, it's got a little touch. Of this almost kind of farmhousey quality to it, you know. There's a little bit of woodiness, a little bit of graininess, a wee bit of a kind of herbally vegetal kind of thing. You can smell that um, underneath, and that's that is the yeast that is that's doing that. Um, yeah, that's really interesting actually. So yeah, it's got a little bit. You can you'll notice at the back here, nose a little bit of a woody, grainy, herbally vegetally kind of thing, and that's the yeast. As I say, that is the yeast that's giving you that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, the beer. Yeah, this is definitely it's definitely something you get more from the kind of craft pilsners rather than from the, the sort of classic original ones, if you like. So that's an interesting one. I'm not sure exactly what kind of chemical that is. This is one of the things I've never I, I have always been in two minds about whether to do one of these kind of sommelier courses. My chemistry heri my sort of chemistry background that I has makes me very curious to know all the different kind of chemical properties and stuff like that. Whereas there is a side of me who thinks, right, no, I should keep the, the channel sort of um, kind of naturally geeky, if you like, rather than bringing the academic side of things into it. But yeah, there, I wish it, I wonder what it is, because I have noticed this kind of thing in a few beers, actually, and I'm pretty sure it's the yeast. Um, you do get a little bit of that woody, herbally, grainy sort of thing. That's right at the back of the beer. But yeah, other than that, you do get a nice little bit of that typical kind of white bready sort of thing you'll get from the Pilsner. It almost smells like a, a kind of wet, um, like quite a quite a wet white bready thing. So you do get a little bit of that um, out of this beer for sure. Um, so yeah, some nice crisp Pilsner malts in there. There's a good little bit of biscuit as well, like a little bit of a McVitie's kind of digestive biscuit sort of thing with this one. A little bit of that sweetness in there. Um, but yeah, mainly it comes across as a fairly smooth, bready and kind of quite crisp. Um, Pilsner. Um, yeah, definitely quite a 
yeah, quite crisp in a lot of ways, but then there is a little bit of that smoother kind of wet white bready quality in there as well. So, um, yeah, I like how that goes together. Mm. It's interesting, yeah, is the more that you smell of that, the more that you smell of this one, the more it kind of smoothens out a little bit. And those yeasty notes that I was talking about, they kind of blend in to the sort of bready base that the beer has. Where this beer really kind of shows a little bit of difference though is in the hoppy side of things and with it being Slovenian hops rather than for example you know um, Czech Sats, Zjatic as they call it or the Haller Tower Tetnanger hops this is where you really start to get the difference from it so for me these Bobek hops they come across as very very smooth actually and they come across as very well blended between the grassy and the floral side of things they almost just have a real smoothness to them actually which is quite interesting the earthiness for me is very, very soft as well. Um, but in fairness, you do get a little, a good little bit of that earthy kind of thing um, from the yeast as well. You do, get, and it kind of blends in with the woody side of the beer too. And that's one of the things is the yeasty side of the beer can really interact with the hops quite interestingly. So it might be something to do with that. But there is just something very, very familiar about those yeasty notes. That are coming out of this one and I have noticed it in other Slovenian beers like I said the green golds um, so yeah that's an interesting point to make about this one I think I told you a lie at the start of the video when I said I hadn't had Slovenian beers in over a year I think the green golds the green gold ones were about six months ago um, so yeah I told you lies at the start of the video my apologies um, so yeah the, the the notes that you get out of this one, the floral notes for me, um, they're quite they're very very smooth. The grassiness again is very very smooth, but it's quite a bright grassiness I think in this one. But that's what really strikes me about this Bobek hop is it's it's just very smooth and very nicely blended between the grassy and the floral side of things. There's a good little bit of earthiness to this one. It's quite a smooth earthiness actually. It's somewhere in between the German smoothness and the English, the sort of English darkness, it's got a little bit more, the earthiness I think has a wee touch more kind of pungency to it in this one. And on the fruity side of things, this beer is kind of interesting as well because you do get, you get, a, it's almost really quite peary this one. I find that the, the aroma that comes out of this for me is very peary. It does have a wee bit of a kind of citrusy edge to it, just a little bit of that kind of um, grassy, citrusy kind of thing. I do like how that, um, how that all goes together. And um, the aroma that comes out of this beer is really nice and very, very smooth in a lot of ways actually. Um, for me, I really like this one. I really like how that um, how that goes together. It gets a thumbs up from me. The aroma is very nice, but it's cool to have it with a Slovenian hop because it is just that little bit different. But yeah, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma then. We're going to get stuck into this one and see how we go. So this one is the Kronberger Pils coming in at 5% ABV from Pivovarna Reservoir Dogs in Nova Gorica, just on the Italian border in Western Slovenia. Thank you again to Davor for making this review uh, possible once again. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, school, Nazdravje. That's quite nice actually. Oh yeah. It's very it is really nicely done this one. And it is it is actually quite different because of this um because of these Slovenian hops. But I like this one. I do like this. Um yeah. Where to start with this beer then? So it's got everything you'd expect and I mean that's what you want with these beers you don't want them to be kind of mental and crazy and stuff you do want them just to be nicely done actually and I've no you know there is generally speaking I'd say that there are more and more breweries starting to pay attention to these um to these lager beers now which is is great actually I felt for a long time that the German beers the sort of German style beers if you like have been neglecting it. It's all been about the IPAs and stuff. So it's nice to see the laggers getting a little bit of attention these days. And this is nice. So thumbs up to Reservoir Dogs again. And yeah, if you take a good gulp of that, it's got that lovely kind of crispness to it as well. So yeah, where to start with this one? Um, 
it's a lot more crisp actually in the flavour than I was thinking it would be from the aroma. I really like how that goes together. So straight away across the middle of the palate you've got a lovely bit of that. You can feel that nice Pilsner malt quality. You get a bit of the kind of um, wet sort of white bready quality in there and it just goes it just goes right across the middle of the palate there and it's really solid in that sense. So on the back third of the tongue uh, on the back third of the tongue you've got a nice little bit of brightness um, there as well. You can feel that sort of crisp Pilsner malt coming out but you can feel the breadiness is just a little bit kind of thicker there as well which is quite nice. Um, I find this one, this is actually, it's got quite a bit of graininess to it this Pilsner I think. But yeah on the back third of the tongue you've got that lovely um, you do have that lovely kind of bready brightness to the beer if that makes sense. You can feel a slightly thicker white bready quality there. On top of that you've got these nice um, you've got these nice kind of more bitey pilsnery notes coming out of the beer and um, yeah I think it goes together um, really quite nicely in that sense. Um, so yeah you can feel there is a wee bit of graininess there. Some of those woody notes, the yeasty qualities come out in the back third of the tongue so you can feel pardon me um, you can really feel on the back third of the tongue and um, you've got a nice little bit of um, that that kind of woody greenness there. It's not quite as apparent in the flavour as it is in the aroma right enough but you do get those woody kind of um, those woody kind of slightly vegetally notes, those are on the very back of the palate. There's a bit of the kind of white bready note sits on top of it and then you have the graininess on top of that and the, the kind of Pilsner crispness. But as you move further forward into the, the middle third of your palate you can feel it just gets a bit more crisp and light if you like. In the very centre of your palate there is a wee teeny touch of a sweeter caramel there but as you move out from that it is definitely more kind of biscuity. It's almost like in the middle third of your palate you've got this kind of circle in the middle of your tongue. So yeah, sweet caramel in there and then more kind of biscuity as you move further out, uh, as you move further out from the centre of that there which is quite interesting. But um, yeah, I like how that goes together. But underneath that of course you've got the kind of breadiness and then you've got the more crisp Pilsner element there. As I've told you in various reviews before, Pilsner malt is really annoying to try and describe because it just has that crispness to it. It's, it's, it's a flavour. It's not really a flavour, it's just a feel that this one has. It really has that kind of, um, it's almost a bit like a kind of bitiness or whatever, but yeah, the pills, you've got the bread, the pilsner bitiness, then you've got the sweet kind of biscuit qualities sitting on top of that. So yeah, I like how that goes together. It's kind of got everything you'd expect in terms of flavour profile from the malt base, this one. So let's focus on the hoppy side of things then. Back corners of the palate, you do get a good little bit of earthiness out of this one. As I say, it's somewhere between the it's somewhere between the German smooth and the more English strong earthiness, if you like. Maybe it's kind of about the same level as a Belgian earthiness. I always found the Belgian hops were a bit in between that as well. But when you move further forward along the side of the palate there, it has a little bit more of a herbal quality. And as you reach the front corners of the palate, there's a good, there's a nice little bit of floral aromaticity to this one. You do get a little bit of floral aromaticity there, but it's still quite a smooth floral aromaticity, actually, which is quite interesting. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, the floral notes are quite smooth. They do, in fairness, get a little touch drier the further you go into the aftertaste. But yeah, as you go round the front curve of the palate, um, the beer does get a little bit lighter and more. Um, it does get a little bit lighter and more grassy, actually, which is quite, um, which is quite interesting. Um, if you go behind that front curve of the palate, you do get some really nice. Um, you do get a nice little bit of a fruity, kind of juicy thing going on with it as well. Actually, I like how that how that goes on. But yeah, around the front curve of the palate, it's got quite a nice um, grassy element to it. And as you go further into the aftertaste, I do think it gets a little bit. There is a wee touch of zestiness to it. So on that front third of the tongue, as I always say, behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. And yeah. The fruitiness on this one, if you go towards the back of that front third of your palate, there is a wee bit of a kind of stronger citrusy quality to the beer, but then as you just kind of edge your way forward, it gradually gets a little bit more. There is a wee bit, as I say, it's quite, the citrusy quality kind of spreads all the way forward, but you do start to get more kind of slightly peary, apple -y 
uh, Esther's coming out of this one. Yeah, quite peary and apple for me, this beer. It's almost got a wee bit of an oily, there is a wee bit of an oily, kind of grassy, lemony sort of thing on the kind of front tip of your tongue as well, which is interesting. So like I say, the thing that's really interesting for me about this is the, the way the Bobek hop comes out. Um, as I say, I think it, um, the earthiness is a little bit stronger than the... Um, yeah, I'd say the earthiness is a little bit stronger than the Hallertows and the Titnangers and the Czech Sats. Um, it's got a little bit more... The, the, the citrusy notes are a little bit stronger, I think, as well. I think it's a little bit more stronger in the, stronger in the lemony and grassy side of things. Um, and the sort of peary apple esters that you get with this. I don't know if it's more gooseberry-like. Um, but yeah, I quite like... I, I don't know. This beer, it does have a wee bit of a gooseberry vibe to it the further you go into the aftertaste. But otherwise, um, I like how um, I do like how that goes together in this one. For me, this is a really nicely um, it's a really nicely done beer, I have to say. So again, thumbs up to Reservoir Dogs. But yeah, the Bobet Cops for me, a little bit more earthy, bit kind of more blended in the grassy floral side of things. Um, the floral notes, as I say, it's got a little bit of kind of a zesty quality to it that comes out a bit later on, and I think the fruits are a wee bit brighter actually. The citrusy zest is a little bit brighter, then you've got the more kind of apple and peary esters coming out. So this is an interesting one, definitely. I like how this goes together. Yeah, for me this one is really quite nice. Um, on the um, the mouthfeel side of things, then I would say that this beer is quite. Um, I'd say that this beer is quite. Um, hmm, how do we say? I'd say that it's one of the more oily pilsners that I've come across. Actually, um, it's at the kind of top end of light body, bottom end of mid body. That's somewhere around there. Like I say, for me, it just strikes me as quite a slick and slightly oily pilsner. There's a good bit of crispness to it at the same time, though. Yeah, but yeah, to me it comes across as quite oily. But I think, you know, I've said this about other Slovenian beers as well, actually. It comes across, uh, a lot of the, uh, I've always found this with the Slovenian beers, and I remember saying the same about some of their, their IPAs and stuff. They've got, uh, the fruitiness in particular comes across as just being a little bit oily and slick for me. This must just be the mouthfeel that the Slovenians like. And their beers, and I love that. That in different countries you notice things like that. The Greek beers were the same actually, they like their beers to have a big oily fruitiness to them. Their wine was very much like that as well. So, yeah, for me, this is quite an oily, and it's one of the more oily kind of pilsner beers that you're going to come across. I think, in terms of hoppy bitterness, what are we going to say about this one? Um, yeah, I think this one's kind of sitting about 25 ish. 30 IBUs maybe at the most. Yeah, 25, 30 IBUs out of this one. The malt base has a nice bit of smoothness to it. There's a good bit of crispness in there. Wee tiny touch of sweetness as well, actually. Um, a wee tiny touch of sweetness. And um, yeah, so 25 IBUs, smooth malt base, quite crisp actually as well. Then the fruits are a little bit more kind of oily. And um, a little touch juicy as well, actually. You do get a nice little bit of juiciness out of this beer the further that you go into the aftertaste. And like I say, it's that oily, juicy character for me that sort of epitomises, I guess you could say, um, Slovenian beer. That's the real trait I know in a lot of the, uh, I notice in a lot of these Slovenian beers is the kind of oily um, juiciness, if you like. So um, yeah, and really interesting pills to this one. The Bobek hop, the smoothness of the the floral and the grassy characters and the slightly more pronounced earthiness I think that's what makes this one a little bit different actually but with the yeasty notes this beer has as well that really gives you the idea that it is a kind of craft pilsner so um, yeah let's leave it at that for this one this is a really interesting beer and it's one that's made me think a little bit too so quite interesting to have a sort of classic um, Slovenian type pilsner actually so um, yeah awesome to review this one for you and nice to kind of kick off again with a Reservoir Dogs review I'm sure as I say these guys will feature at some point on a Meet the Brewery segment we will get that done because I know that these guys are interested and it would be cool to introduce the Slovenian beer scene a little bit more again but um, yeah, massive thank you once again to Davor for making this review possible massive shout out to May as well for his uh, other beers that he gave me before to review on the channel 
and um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one was the Kronberger Pills at 5% ABV from Pivovarna Reservoir Dogs in Nova Gorica in Western Slovenia here in Europe. So yeah, cool to review this one and I hope you guys have enjoyed the first review in the next round of Slovenian beers. You will see more being added to this over the next little while, but uh, yeah, it's been really cool to kick this off again. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from people of Arna Reservoir Dogs as well. Huge shout out to Davor for making this review possible again. And I hope that you guys enjoy seeing some more Slovenian beers here on the channel. Until the next time, Slanja just now, I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, Skull, Nazdravia, make sure you check out Pivovarna Reservoir Dogs from Slovenia. Cheers.